Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to Bead Table Wednesday. The beginning of the holidays. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. How are you guys doing? I'd love to hear from you guys if you're watching today. Say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. I'm going to start in just a second. Um, I'm going to get a few things put together. Hi, Wendy. Welcome, welcome. So you guys taking a break from getting ready for the Thanksgiving celebration tomorrow. Thankfully, um, I don't have to do much for it because my troops do. But there is always the busyness of it all, right? <laughs> Hi, Kathy and Yvette. <laughs> Susan, nice to have you guys here. And another Susan, an abundance of Susans. Hi, guys. Oh, weird. I have a weird, uh, I don't know. It's fuzzy on that corner. We'll just ignore it. Hi, Anita, watching from South Africa. Welcome. And hi, John Lynn. Happy Thanksgiving. Yes, happy Thanksgiving, you guys. Already end of November. Next week is going to be December. So I, um, we had a huge amount of snow last week and it just put me in a mood. I may have watched a Christmas show <laughs> and listened to Christmas music and felt joyful and came up with this project. I was going to do another vintage play date, but this idea for these two projects just popped in my head and I thought, I'm going to do those as a little Thanksgiving gift to you guys. So that's what we are doing. Julie, you're camping in the Redwoods for Thanksgiving. That's cool. I'd love to see pictures of that. Hi, Holly and Barbara and my mom. Hi, mom and Julie and Wendy. Norma, hello, watching from... Uh, uh, YouTube. Thanks for joining us. Helene, hello. All the way up from Canada. Julie, where did this month go? I don't know. It's out the door. Can't even keep track of them. <laughs> so, just like the month, I'm going to just march on into the next fun thing. And so, we are going to do two projects today. I have the necklace right here. I'm going to show you how to do the texturing. So we're going to start with a metal blank, you guys, just a plain piece of metal. And I'm going to show you how to use wire and a hammer to do this cool texturing on there. Ooh, I'm going to try to get my sh lines straight on my video. <laughs> oh no, Em, you have a rainy, rotten spring. Oh, well, you know, that's good though, because that means flowers are right around the corner. Right? Isn't that how that goes? Okay, so I just finished, like, just finished painting these guys. What do you think? Cardinals in my Queen Anne's lace design. I'm loving them. Very pretty. So I think I'm going to use one of these for my bird instead of the white bird. So um, I'm putting in the website right after the video the birds that I have in stock, which I don't know where they just ran off to. They were here on the table a second ago. Well, I have the two necklaces. This first dove right here, and then we have the frosted Queen Anne's Lace one with the teal and the white and looking like he's a little snowy. And um, I showed you guys these big, huge hibiscus pendants last week and told you I'd love to paint it. So I painted it white with vintage patina paints or uh, ultimate paint. <laughs> and so um, that's what we're going to do. And I have a few of the little buttons for you guys. I'm going to put them on the website right after the show. So I have three different styles of buttons and I'll have more next week, but I wanted to start with just three and see what you guys thought of buttons. So I got some in holiday-ish colors that could be worn all season long, which is how I like my holiday jewelry. Um, you know, jewelry that's definitely Christmassy or Hanukkah or whatever holiday you're going to celebrate are super fun, 
but they definitely have a time limit. Whereas I feel winterish jewelry, you can wear all the way until, you know, through March if you want to. <laughs> definitely through uh, February. So we're going to make the necklace and then I'm going to show you a really quick, simple little knotted bracelet with the snowflake on it. So two quick and easy jewelry designs that you guys could use for gift giving over the holiday season or just to wear and you can do it in lots of different colors depending on your mood. Well hello everyone we got Curtis Rock I haven't seen you in a while hi happy Thanksgiving and Brenda and Miranda hello dear Miranda always loving seeing your dessert posts on Facebook <laughs> <laughs> and we have Nancy from Florida, Rosalinda, welcome, Candy, Angela from Illinois, welcome everyone. Oh, guys, my two birds are right in front of me, of course. <laughs> oh, and I also have a little green guy too. I have a little powder on him from, that sounded bad. <laughs> I use cornstarch powder in making my beads, so sometimes there's a little. So. These are my four, four holiday birds or winter if you want to go with just the white or green and red, but use the monochromatic instead of mixing them together to give them more of a winter feel instead of holiday feel. All right, so let me pull out my tools because that's what we're going to be using. And if you guys are familiar with my book, which is no longer in print, I'm sorry to say the... Um, beautiful elements book this is where I show this metal sketch design in that book and I show you how to make several different elements with a, with that and so we are going to start let me move these out of the way we're gonna start by doing this little metal guy first so they come blank um, flat on both sides and we have lots of these in the shop put this up just a little bit okay so my steel bench block my rubber um, rubber block to dampen the sound and then I am using this just looks gross but it's just an old <laughs> thing of galvanized steel wire from the hardware store and this is 20 gauge is what we'll be using today so just cheap um, 20 gauge steel wire when you're doing these metal sketches which is what I call it there you can't look up metal sketches and find anything <laughs> it's basically using wire to hammer a design onto your um, your metal and you need to have your wire harder than the metal that you're hammering on and so steel out of brass and copper and sterling if you are feeling really brave um, the steel is going to be the hardest um, metal out of those three and so that's why I recommend using the steel and for this I'm going to just bend this wire into a curve it doesn't even have to be a circle we're just going for a curve I'm going to start up here on the top and I'm going to put this curve towards the outside. Now you can use um, a ball peen hammer. I'm going to use this dead blow hammer. It's a heavy little hammer and so this is going to give me a, a um, what do I want to say, like a thicker, deeper impression with less work. So you always hold your hammers at the bottom and swing and let the um, let gravity do the work here so you don't want to hold your hammer up close. So okay guys this is your warning to turn your sound down just a little bit while I do this. Oop. So I got my first mark. It didn't do all the way so I'm going to just turn this a little bit until I get a mark here in the front. I don't know. Why isn't it working? Let me reposition this. There we go. So I want to do these like little um, tree branches coming out from the outer part to the, I mean the inner part to the outer part. So I'm going to just go along and do little branch-like designs. 
Ooh, you have to make sure it's flat all the way down. For some reason, my metal just doesn't want to work on that corner. So I'm just going to use this end. There we go. And I'm going to go all the way down. I feel like I may have hammered this one too much already. Let me get another piece. That guy is a little too flat. So, just cutting another little piece off, turning it. There we go. And I'm going to do one more up here going outward. And I'm going to turn this and start going the other way. Okay. Just kind of seeing where I want this to go. All right. You don't have too many hammer blows before the wire gets flat and you're going to have to switch out your wire once it gets flat. So I, I could have used um, 18 gauge and that would have given me a little bit more thickness too, but this is what I had on hand. So this is what we're going to use. Are you all going deaf? <laughs> so sorry, folks. Then I'm just going to go back through here and fill in any spots that I feel are empty-ish. There we go. A few more down here on the bottom. your metal over to the, I mean your wire over to the other side if that one isn't working for you. Okay. That's what we're going for. It's wonky. Don't worry about that. We're going to turn it over and use the ball peen hammer, flat one, and I'm just going to hammer all the way around. A little flatter. Now the next thing I'm going to use is a riveting hammer. Okay so the riveting hammer is going to give us the little um, oh, the needles on the pine branches. So I'm just going to start on one of these little lines and I'm going to hammer in a downward fashion just like a, a pine needle would be. And I'm going to do this on both sides of the twigs, um, turning my pendant back and forth so I can get both sides. And it's okay if this is messy. Don't feel like you have to be too perfect about it. You're giving the impression of these little branches. So it's okay if it's not exactly perfect. Okay. I'm going to turn this way. And 
and I'm really just using the little edge here of the hammer, not the whole entire hammer, to get this texture on here. pretty good to me. Now, um, I really hammered the heck out of this more than I wanted to, but that's okay. I'm going to take my little file here. I have a little burr that happened, so I'm just going to take a file and file that down just a little tiny bit, just so it's not just some weird little dot sticking out on the end, inside there. Okay. I'm digging this. It's a little more rustic than my other one, but I'd probably do two or three of these and get some more practice. But as is, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to take my Vintage Buffing Block and buff this guy. And then you can really see the design start to pop out there. There we go. So maybe, um, maybe I didn't use the dead blow hammer. Maybe I just used my ball peen hammer. I don't think I did, but I definitely did not squish it as much. Let me grab another one and we'll try that one more time. Jess, can you give me that? Yeah. I have my little one here. Okay, so 2.0. Just want to see if this works out a little better. Even though I just made this the other day. My, uh, <laughs> what my intention was and what I actually did don't always match up. Okay, so let's, let's try this again. I'm going to use just my regular hammer. Yeah, that's probably what I did. Okay. So moving that pendant around to get those little branches going in different directions. Yeah, guys, just use your ball peen hammer. You don't need to pull out the big guns and flatten your metal to pieces, <laughs> which is what I did. Got a little aggressive there. <laughs> Julia, I'm going to show you the next step of how I um, am going to treat this pendant. I'm going to color it and darken it yep, so that we can really see all those great textures in there. Oh yeah, this is much easier, much less fighting, and um, yeah, I should have known when I was struggling so much that uh, something wasn't quite right. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to turn it over and flatten it out just a tiny bit. Now let's use the riveting hammer and again in a downward motion turning it um, so that your little needle needles are going downward to the left and downward to the right just like on a real tree. I'm not worrying about this being perfect or, um, you know, if it doesn't exactly follow along. The point is the impression of the, the uh, branches and leaves. I mean pine needles.
Okay, much better. Okay, now let's buff this up a little bit so we can get some of the highlights um, shinier and more of the raw brass color. And then you can really see that texture start to come through more. Yay! <laughs> Um, so Kathy Engel says, could you use a hammer? I mean, a screwdriver, like a, um, like a flathead screwdriver. Kathy, give it a try. I, I definitely use, um, screwdrivers for like dots and stuff on metal. So give it a try. But I will tell you, you guys, you can pick up a riveting hammer like this for under $10. So they're very inexpensive. I know you may want to get working right now, but yeah, you could definitely try the, um, the texture in a pinch with a hammer. You could also maybe use a V uh, uh, if you have a lettering, like a capital V. I don't know, give it a try. Maybe it'll work. Uh, you get to be creative and try things out. Okay, let me grab a little, have my little painting plate here for the next step. I'm going to be using one second. I gotta find my black real quick. Here it is. Okay, so I'm using emerald and onyx. Did I show that? <laughs> so this is emerald. I'm gonna start shaking this bad boy up right now. Just gonna use a little paintbrush. And I'm going to grab a baby wet for cleanup. Just a plastic plate that I can reuse. I'm going to do a few dots of the emerald. And then a dot of the green. I mean black. Onyx, as it says on the package. If your bottle's stuffed up, just poke a wire in it. To release that paint. There we go. And that's way too dark, so I'm going to pull it over here, get just a little bit more green. There we go. Now I'm going to paint this on. Making sure to get in the lines really good. And you could grab a paper towel to do this. I'm just going to use my finger and then just wipe the paint off my finger. I'm just going to go over the top of it a little bit here like that. And now I'm going to wash my brush. So this is, this is step one. So I'm going to do the green first and then let this um, dry for, set up for just a few seconds. And then I'm going to um, do black over the top of it. So so you can see on this one, I have green and areas of black, and I've also um, buffed it quite a bit afterwards too. Okay, that should be good. There we go. I'm going to let that dry for a minute and then I'm going to use the vintage buffing block on it. So while I do that, let me make sure I have all my components. I'm going to need the um, filigree scroll and we have these on the website. And we have our little guy here. I have my bird. Let's see. I'm going to use I'm going to go for, should I do a really Christmassy one, you guys? What do you think? 
really Christmassy? Yes, no, maybe so. I think I might want to... Maybe I'm going to do the green. Do a little more monochromatic for this guy. What do you think? Christmas, red and green, or... um. Or the green and green. Um, this is the ultimate paint from Vintage. So, uh, Terry, you asked that. That's what we're using. So these are the ultimate paints, the opaque ones. So great question. So Vintage has two different kinds of paints. One is a, um, oh, what do I want to say? Um, a stain, which has more transparency and then the ultimate paint just plain is more thick so all right <laughs> both <laughs> the red and green definitely does give that Christmassy vintage Christmas vibe doesn't it hmm and then I have three different buttons let's see which one is gonna oh what do you guys think I'm thinking that's gonna be it or I could do white. Mm. That's a hard, hard call. So we have this one, not that one, or the gold. Mm, I think I'm gonna do the gold. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go for the gold. Okay, I feel like this is dry enough that I can take my buffing block on it. And this buffing block is seen its days it's ready to be replaced <laughs> and I'm going to get as much of the shiny metal from underneath showing again so that only the pine branches are going to be dark the gold you guys like the gold oh Rita welcome this is your first time watching well I'm so glad you found humble beads so we do um videos every Wednesday at three o'clock and I share tutorials or um, different inspirations with you guys. Okay, so there's my my guy. Where's the, is that the one that I um, hammered to death? And then where's the other one? Oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> That is the one I hammered to death. Let's do a nice one. How about that? Okay. Today's one of those days where I literally feel like everything disappears from me instantly. I like I lost that first plate already. <laughs> How did I do that? Okay, let's try this again. So a dot. And a dot. And this time I'm going to take just a tiny bit of that black over here. So I don't want it to be too black. Oh, you guys just get to see everything twice today. Aren't you lucky? <laughs> oh, I don't want to wipe off too much of that. There we go. Yeah, I was wondering why one I redid was looking so funky. <laughs> oh. Okay, yeah, you guys are some great ideas. So Teresa thought the white one added more contrast. And you're right, Teresa, it definitely does add more contrast. But I already used the white button in this design, so I think I'm going to go the darker one just for a little variety in the samples that I have here and then of course this one looks so pretty to me this is the one I'm gonna be wearing lots this Christmas season and what do you guys think of check buttons do you guys want me to carry these um, on the regular I'm gonna order some more today to have in the shop just as a, a trial to see how you guys like them but they definitely have a lot of design uh, possibilities and so I'm thinking thinking I might add a few to have on the website regularly okay doing just a little bit of black here oh 
Okay, I'm gonna let that set for a second before I buff it. Oh, you guys are being so patient with me. Oh, you guys like it. Add berries. Like, add berries on this, like, paint them. You guys can give that a try and see what you think. Um, I did try it on one of them, but it didn't turn out quite like I wanted. So one thing you can do, should I do it on this? Maybe I'll do it on my ugly one. So while this dries for a second, you guys can, we can do some berry experiments. So. This is my ugly one, so I'm not going to feel bad if it doesn't turn out. This is a Phillips head screwdriver, the one that has a little star point on it. So I'm going to put it here. Let me move this up a little more. You guys can see the mess. That's okay. And I'm going to give it a hard hammer. Oh, see, I'm not showing. It's not showing up very well. There's too much texture on here. Let's see if it, how it looks going down. I'll do a few of those. Ooh, <laughs> don't want to hit my camera. Every bead on the table is jumping. <laughs> go through and, and now I'll add a little bit of red into those dots and you guys tell me what you think Got some bright red here this is a coral I don't know if I have like a bright bright red in my toolbox here. So I'm going to use coral and add a dot of black to make it a little bit darker. And I think since I'm doing dots, oh, okay. So let's uh, add just a no, that's just going to make it gray. No boy, no. Well, they're just going to be little coral dots because I don't have red. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, you know what I do have, guys, that would look really cute? I have some, um, ooh, I don't even know if I can see where I put those little dots. We're so textured up on here. Okay. Nah, this is a fail. That's okay. That's not going to work. So we're going to not waste any more time on that. Because sometimes that's just the way things go. But I will show you guys what I have at the Maybe. Oh. My kiddo moved my inventory box. I don't know where the new inventory is. I have some little teeny tiny red drops that are super small that would make perfect berries. Okay. So I want to bring out all that great texture that I created on here and the black and green are going to be inside the lines. Bring you back down. <laughs> oh. Yes, guys, I have a good, uh, a good little berry bead that I think will work really nicely, but 
going to have to wait a second to grab them. Okay, so just going all the way around, making sure I'm getting the inside part of this. Okay, there we go. I like him just as he is. I'm going to leave him. But maybe I'll take off just a little bit more of that black right there. And this is the Vintage Buffing Block. Um, you can never have too many of these on hand. I'm going to order some more for myself today. Okay, so here's our pendant. We have our scroll, uh, yeah, our filigree scroll, our button, and our little bird. And I'm going to grab 18 gauge vintage para wire in the um, antique brass. We're going to take away the fuzz because you don't need that to make a project. <laughs> I'm going to do about, oh, I don't really need this much, about four inches because I'm just going to do a simple loop on the top and bottom here. some stuff out of my way. Okay, simple loop on the top and bottom. Look at you guys, all of these great ideas. You could use clay for red dots. You could glue a seed bead on for a berry. A red flat back crystal would look nice as a dot. Yes, a cluster of red seed beads would be cool between the pendant and the bead, uh, the pendant and the button. Yes, you guys, so many good ideas. I love them all. Okay, so just making a simple loop with this guy, and then I'm going to open up my loop, and I'm going to slide on my scroll fil filigree here, and then my pendant. I'm going to close this up nice and tight. And now my button, it's a shank button, so I'm just going to slide that guy on there and let him um, go all the way down to the bottom. And now I'm going to grab two little size 8 seed beads, or you could use a 4 millimeter bead or spacer. If you have a metal spacer, those would work too. So I'm just going to that fall down. One may be enough. Let's see what I did on the other one here. I did two. Okay. So let me grab another one. And these are just in a brass color to match the wire. And I'm going to slide my bird on. Uh, let's see. I might take one off. I kind of want my bird to be nestled behind the yeah, I want my bird to be behind the button so that the button doesn't move around. So the bird is like holding, the bird and the pendant are together holding that guy in there nice and tight. Okay, and now I'm going to do a loop on the top here. Just quick and easy. Just a simple loop on the top of my bird. And excuse my reach, I'm going to grab a large jump ring. Let's see, I'm going to use a, a dark brass one, I think. Oh, here we go. I want to use a slightly bigger one, so I guess I'm going to go with one of these brighter brass ones have some contrast there between the two. <laughs> uh, the button is as is. Great question, um, Rita. So the button is as it is. It's just a check glass button. They come in that style and color. Okay, now I'm going to throw on this big thick jump ring. Well, I'm going to leave that open because for the necklace part I'm going to be using chain. 
think this chain is nine by six. I think that's what this one is. It's a vintage chain. And I'm gonna cut two, well not cut, I'm gonna open and um, use five links. So I'm gonna do that two times, one for each side of the necklace. And I'll leave that open. Actually, before I get any further, I should do my little drops so I don't have a bunch of open links all over the place. I'm going to use the same wire. I'm going to cut, I'm just going to do three. I'm just going to do one side for now. And then you guys know if I do it on one side, you do exactly the same on the other side. So you don't need to see that happen. And I'm going to use my one step looper. This is the 18 gauge wire from Vintage in the Antique Brass. And so I'm going to make three little loops with my, this is the 1.5 millimeter um, one step looper that you guys can get from Vintage.com. Highly recommend this little tool. Makes life so much easier. And now I have some tiny little four millimeter check glass drukes that I'm going to use. So let me grab three of them. I'm going to close this loop up a little bit because it didn't quite close. There we go. Any, um, you can use any bead on this to do the embellishment. I used six millimeter fire polish on the other necklace and that looks um, you know, a little more substantial. And then I use little teeny tiny four millimeters on this one. Okay, so I'm gonna have this, if my, um, if my loop is going this way, I'm gonna have this loop going the opposite direction. And I don't wanna get it too tight to the bead because I don't wanna break the glass bead. You don't want to be too far away because then you're going to have weird spaces, but you don't want to be right on top of the bead because you can crack it. And I don't recommend cracking beads. It's not fun. Okay, one more. Ooh, I might have cracked that one. Nope. Okay. So I have my three little dangles. Let's see if my little guy already fell off here. So I'm going to stick on this little guy, close it up. Now on the end here, I'm going to grab three of these little links just by themselves to attach the pieces together. So I'm going to use these guys as jump rings basically. So stick that on and close it up. And one more. Uh, Marlene, this is a shank button that I just strung on wire. So you can see it's a shank button. I put the two pendants on the wire. I used 18 gauge wire and then I used a little spacer above the shank button to um, give a little space so my bird didn't go down too far. Okay. did not cut my gold ribbon, but I mean my gold um, chain, but I ended it with gold um, curb, not curb chain, um, oval chain, flattened oval chain, not gold, but brass, raw brass, but I'm just going to let you guys, you know how that goes together. So you'd put your two jump rings on the end here, close this up. 
and then that is going to be your necklace with the brass ending at that. So I'll finish this and take a picture afterwards, but I don't want to waste any more of your time showing things that you guys already know how to do. So you're going to just add one more link here attaching the little chain. Oop, let me get that up here nice and close. So you're going to attach the little chain. And this is a, I think it's two by three millimeter. No, that can't be right. Yeah, two by three millimeter for the curb chain. I mean, not curb chain, oval chain. But you can use whatever chain you have on hand. This is one of those projects that you can mix or match, use anything you want. Um, you don't even have to do the fancy the fancy wreath one at the bottom. Like I had this guy on here. I also have smaller leaves that would look really cool, little woodland leaves. Or you could use a fancier pendant, something like the little fern. So you can mix or match, use whatever you have on stock for these projects. All right, let's get to the bracelet really quick. And I'm going to do the bracelet in mixed metal with silver and um, and gold. I have little four millimeter, I mean not four millimeter, they are eight millimeter jump, I'm uh, not jump rings, <laughs> seed beads. There we go. That's what I'm trying to say. And I have them in several different finishes. So I'm going to use use slightly different colors for this one because why not I like showing options <laughs> yeah guys I like your uh, tiny little red beads below the reef I'm gonna wreath not reef <laughs> I'm gonna pull out some little red beads and do that for the photo for you guys okay and I'm going to be doing this little guy so I'm gonna be mixing in some different finishes. So I have, this one's kind of um, an iridescent finish. I have two matte ones. I really love this frosted matte with a um, gold lining underneath. Very, very pretty. Rita, you're going to have to go. Yeah, guys, you can watch the replay too if, if time's short. It won't take me long to uh, do the technique to show you the bracelet because we're not going to do the whole, the whole bracelet. I'm just going to show you the technique, guys, and and you can figure it out. So I'm going to start with 30 inches of 4 ply wax linen. My chain is catching on to everything over here. Okay, so 30 inches of 4 ply wax linen. And so I'm going to use a teal color to match my charm. And I'm going to take, this is just a piece of craft paper, or if you have a plastic bag, not plastic bag, paper bag. Oof. I need a, I need a, a tea or something to wake myself up here. <laughs> and I'm just running it through, pinching through the plas uh, piece of craft paper. It, um, it's going to take off some of the wax, so it's not so waxy on, on your cord. And I'm taking my 30 inches and I'm going to fold it in half. And my little clasp here, I'm going to use the branch clasp, but I'm going to do silver and brass for this one. So I'm going to start on the toggle part because this part is going to get the most wear and tear on your bracelet. And so I want to use, um, I want to use the loop that has the strongest connection on the part that you're going to be pulling and yanking on the most. So I'm going to put this together, thread it through. <laughs> Kimberly, I love that you get to uh, watch me on YouTube while you're making Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so you're going to stick these through. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> you're going to make a loop and then grab your two ends here and pull it through. So you're making that lark's head knot. 
and this will give you a nice secure connection to start your bracelet with. Okay, and now, oh, and I also have six millimeter round droops in this really cool ivory with a matte gold finish on them. So it has this nice little snowball effect, gilded snowball. Sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> and what I'm going to do on one side of my um, cord here, I'm going to put three seed beads. And then on the other end, I'm going to string on. No, I didn't do that. That was another idea I had that didn't work out. Okay, so I am going to string three beads on both of the cords and I want to make sure I'm not repeating this design and that I'm mixing it up on both of these as I go along so that they're um, different on both ends. Okay there we go. So I have the um, six beads on the cord and then I'm going to do a simple knot here and I like that this blue cord is going to show prominently on this design to accent my little snowflake here. Okay, and now I'm going to take one side. So you're going to do one side only with the <coughs> droop. Pull that down and then you're going to do a knot. And you're going to repeat. Uh, Donna, the seed bead mix is something I have made up, and I'm going to put those on my website this afternoon, along with the um, the new red birds and the buttons, too. So we have both of those coming this afternoon. Alright, so making sure you're mixing up things from... Um, from both the bottom, the previous, the previous little set that you did, and then the ones that are next to each other, so that you have this random looking pattern, even though you're working really hard to make it look random. <laughs> Sometimes effortless uh, looks take a lot of effort, don't they? Okay, and again, just doing a simple knot, making sure you're pulling both cords down. So you're going to separate it and put your druk on one of the cords and the druk is just a round, round glass bead here. And I'm going to slip that on and tie a knot. And you're going to repeat this until you're one inch short of the length that you want. So my bracelet, um, I wanted it to be eight inches. So I went to seven inches because the clasp and the two jump rings that I'm going to put on the ends take uh, about an inch of your design. Okay. Do you guys want to see me go all the way to the bottom and finish this completely? Or are you guys done and you've watched too many videos today and you have turkey to make. Let me know in the comments. Quick and short, you're ready to go or let's just take a minute to bead this out. Um, <laughs> Gina, this is four ply wax linen. Great question. So the four ply is what I'm using for this one because I want those knots to really stand out in my design. So that's why I'm using the four ply for this design. You want to watch Gina? What else? Anyone else got opinions? Got to run? Ready to watch? <laughs> I obviously have nothing better to do. I'm get into this little groove and I don't want to stop making the piece. I want to just keep going and get it finished. And yes, being random is uh, quite a trick. <laughs> 
there's some skill to that randomness, isn't there, guys? Okay. Halfway done. You guys are... You want to see. Okay. Then I'm going to just keep going. And uh, get to the end here when we... When we get to the end, so you guys can see the whole bracelet put together, start to finish. Um, this is a really cute one to stack up with other bracelets. You know, if you're into a little bracelet party on your wrist. Or I also think this would make a really cute Christmas gift. If you have people on your list who love to wear bracelets. It's fun. It's sweet. You will have to know their general bracelet size if they're... Um, A size seven to seven and a half are pretty standard bracelet sizes. If you have a, a large person in your life that you love that you want to make a bracelet for, I would go eight and a half and then it will be a little dangly like on mine. Eight to eight and a half. And if you have a really teeny tiny person, six and a half would be a good size. And then the nice thing about this is you could always add a few jump rings on the ends if you needed to adjust it. Okay, I'm going to do the droop. And I'm not doing the little clusters. I'm not doing the knots real tight. They're a little bit loose so that those beads move around a little bit. Just thought I'd point that out for you guys. Let's see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the um, the other little beads, the drooks. So I want to make sure I have seven of them before I call it quits here on this one. You know, I even have um, a drook that's whiter and um, almost like a snowball. I think I, I should have used that on this one. If I were going to do it again, I would use that. I will um, make a little link on the website with everything that I used today and I'll post that on the Facebook group after, I mean the Facebook page after all of that's done and I will tag that white snowball looking Druk in there too, because I think that would look really cute with the brighter snowflakes. Sometimes you, uh, <laughs> you get it afterwards. So these drukes are six millimeter on the bracelet. Great question, Patricia. Yeah, so these are the six millimeter ones. And, um, you could use six millimeter fire polish too if you wanted to, to have a little bit more sparkle on here, if that was your jam. And I'm just putting these guys right next to each other. zipping away here. I really love the frosted gold ones with the gold lining in, inside the bead. Those ones just are like perfectly magical holiday. <laughs> Hi Anita, how are you doing? Okay, happy to watch. All right, so let's keep going. Almost done here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Last, last droop. And then I have one more little cluster. And then we are ready to do the finishing. Okay. One more. Let's see what I did on the last one.
and these um, these seed beads, these size eight ones, just for reference, they're about the size of a four millimeter bead. So they're pretty they're pretty chunky. They're um, they're not they're not small like regular seed beads. They are um, they're big boys. <laughs> Yeah, because like here's a here's a four millimeter check glass bead and they're almost the same size. So definitely you could use the four millimeter beads on here too if you wanted to, but the seed beads are a bit more affordable. Okay, let me move all this stuff out of the way before I do the clasp so that I can show you guys up close how to do the clasp because I, I really like this technique that I well I'm sure I'm not the first person to do it but just <laughs> this way I end it it works out really well for the jewelry um, as far as looking really finished without being too clunky and um, and being nice and easy I used too much thread but that's okay so I'm gonna go both strands all the way down on the toggle and I'm gonna separate the strands and I'm gonna pull it through the back again so it's gonna go up through the loop again and I want to make sure that this strand stays to the outside and I'm going to repeat that on this other side this would look so pretty with a cream or white sweater during the winter matter of fact that's what I think I'll do when I wear it okay and I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to tie a knot underneath the loop with the two strands together. So taking the two strands and just tying a regular knot, making sure it goes under the loop. And I didn't position that right, so it shouldn't have been a struggle. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, and I'm going to turn it over, and I'm going to knot one more time. And uh, these two knots are nice and secure. If you want, you could do a little bit of um, glue on the knot, but I never do. The, um, the wax on the cord holds the knot in really tightly, and the double knot helps a lot. I'm going to just give my guy a little haircut here, a little half inch on both sides. Because I like a little crazy fringe, so I'm going to twist those open. And now I'm going to grab an 8mm jump ring. Maybe. Oh, here they are. I'm going to grab my 8mm jump ring and my snowflake charm. And I'm going to attach this on the loop of the clasp. Did I do it on the loop of the clasp? No. Oh no. Did I do that wrong? I did that wrong. Oh well. I'll show you guys what I did here and what I'm going to do to fix it. <laughs> Which isn't much, but on the original bracelet... I attached the um, the clasps on with an oval jump ring, and then I did the knotting. Oh, should have paid attention, but this will work too. Just not quite what I wanted, but that's okay. So I'm going to add the chain with the oval. Um, jump rings onto the side here and attach the, cha the charm to the oval jump rings. So, you got to 
learn all sorts of ways not to do something, right? <laughs> Okay, let me open this jump ring up. So I have one for each side now. Ideally, I should have attached them to the clasp first and then done the knotting on the clasp, a uh, jump ring, exactly like I did on the clasp. But that's okay. It's all good. Make sure this fits in here. Oh no, guys, it's not going to fit in. You cannot do it this way. But I'm not going to redo it. We're just going to take a deep breath and... <laughs> Darn it! Well, I'm glad I went to the end and that we did this so that you guys know the correct way you have to do it is attach it with the jump rings. If you don't have oval jump rings, use small, um, like five millimeter size round jump rings. So you need to have enough space for this little tiny toggle. I mean, yeah, for the branch to go through your small toggle, which is why I used the jump ring in the beginning. <sighs> That's all right. Learning experience. So all I did was attach the chain to the jump ring on each side. <laughs> so um, sometimes there's multiple ways to do things and sometimes I do things for a reason. And so the little jump rings attaching to the clasp help the clasp fit on so that it can go through because you need some you need some skinny little leverage on the end here so that your clasp can go up and down through the toggle. So that's it. I'm going to have to redo this guy. Maybe I'll redo this guy with the white, with the whiter um, little balls in the middle and post a picture of that all done afterwards. But if you have any questions about this, let me know. I'm going to write up these directions um, so that you guys will have the written directions too. We have kits for both of these and I have the kits um, in the... Uh, the red and then this bird. I don't have the kits in any other colors, but I'll share with you guys the links of what I used in today's projects. We're adding to the website the buttons, the birds, the cardinals, and um, the little glass mixes. So hopefully that's everything you need. You just need a little chain and your jump rings. All right. Sorry about that, guys. I um, <sighs> should I had that tea before I started, but that's okay. So you want to start by adding the jump rings on to the clasp before you do the knotting. And you're going to do the knotting directly onto the jump rings. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I could... Well, I don't know. I'm just going to redo it. Uh, wax linen is inexpensive and it didn't take me very long to knot this up. So I'm just going to redo it so that I do it the way that's going to work the best with um, the least amount of trouble for me. And when I'm not talking, it only takes me about 10 minutes to make the bracelet. So <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. Sorry, I'm such a goof. Well, I'm actually, I'm not sorry. <laughs> it's just who I am. Oh, sometimes I get it all right. And sometimes I muddle all the way through. And that's just, that's the creative life. And you can't be afraid to make mistakes and, uh, and learn from them. And that's what I do. <laughs> and I love that you guys were trying to come up with good ideas for me to, um, to fix it, but that's okay. I'm just going to redo it because sometimes it's easier just to redo something the right way quicker and get it done and not, um, not drive yourself crazy trying to make a workaround for it. So I will, um, also add those little red beads that look like berries. I will take a picture of them and show them to you guys in, on the Facebook page too, because they're super cute and they will look really cute. I'll add them to the end of my pendant here. <laughs> Yeah, 
yes, Terry, it is good to muddle through the beating and uh, learn as you go. Unlike baking. Yeah, that's pretty unforgiving. <laughs> <laughs> that's the nice thing about beads guys it's just beads you can just cut it off and restart it and everything's fine thank you guys so much for sticking through to the end of the video i really appreciate it i know it's a, uh you guys are busy getting ready for the holidays tomorrow or maybe you're just getting ready to have a quiet celebration um with a small uh favorite group of people whatever you're gonna celebrate tomorrow even if you're not celebrating because you're not in america and celebrating thanksgiving i want you guys to know that i am super thankful for you and so glad you guys show up every week and create with me and let me be part of your creative journey i want to wish you guys all a happy thanksgiving and have a really nice time with your family or friends or other loved ones <laughs> all over the weekend all right guys um before i forget don't forget that on the website from now until Monday as our thank you if you place the order $50 or more for every $50 you spend we will be spending sending uh, wobbles the little wobble beads with your orders and I've been making some uh, holiday sparkly and uh, pearlescent ones ones that look like snow <laughs> <laughs> or gold with sparkles so they're uh they're a little more festive and ones that you can only get as a free gift so something exciting thank you guys for all your orders already and thank you for letting me be part of your beating journey and your creative um explorations i really appreciate it all right guys I'm going to quit saying goodbye and i'm actually going to go i will take pictures and those directions um I'll put those up on Friday, the written directions. And we're sending kits out next Friday. Is it next Friday or next month? Yeah, next Friday. I'm going to put them together next week and ship out those kits to you guys on next Friday. So you guys, they're, we're only doing 40 of each. So um, they're both about halfway sold out already. So if you want one of those kits, head on over to the website and grab one. All right, guys. Bye. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for joining me and see you um, not on Friday, but next Wednesday.